concept. This is called a hoople culture bed. And uh, to the to the blind eye, it looks like it's just over covered with weeds, but then you start picking out rhubarb and strawberries and uh, the seed that's scattered across the top is rye, which is a cover crop. And you basically, I dug these out two foot down, six feet wide. And I filled them in with logs and brush and then rotten hay from the barn floor and then turf over the top of that, then an enormous amount of composted cow manure and dirt. So these things were originally this tall, but now they've settled and spread out. And so uh, most of the weed seed is germinated, and as the weeds came up, I let them get about this long, and I just fold them over after I pull them out and shake out the roots, and it creates a straw, and that's what you can see is going on here. And that'll be a cover crop to protect my soil from getting eroded and so on and so forth as I build up the soil. But the idea behind the logs and all the organic matter is that these are fertilized for 30 years. Mm. I won't have to do anything to them. I barely even have to water them. Only in the most extreme droughts where they have to be watered. And that's been pretty true. Yeah, there are a lot of work. Tuber culture means in German uh, mound culture or mound bed. It's a very old tradition. So here I'm modifying one. And what I've done is I've created a support system here with these old posts that I got from uh, another farm that was just laying around. These old boards from uh, from the sawmill, uh, all of it was free, just had to go get it. <coughs> and uh, so I've shaped the mound and laid the pallets down on the outside. And the gaps in the pallets, once they're filled with soil and compost, will be a growing space. And of course, where the boards are, I don't have to weed, which is pretty nice. The wood also retains moisture uh, in there as well. These are non-treated pallets. I only use non-treated stuff in the garden. Um, and the way to tell that is, you know, you're looking for good oak hardwood, and they actually have a stamp that says S on them sometimes if they're treated, stuff like that. Uh, just kind of eyeball them, figure out what you're looking for eventually. And so what I'm doing with this system is I'll cut these off level. I'm taking old hog wire that they, they used to use back in the 40s and 50s, about 6 inch by 6 inch. I'm actually going to make an arch, probably flat on top. But there'll be an arch here that goes from one bed to the other, and the pallets will hold it down on so the other side. Uh, using that in the companion planting, meaning one plant does something beneficial for the soil or the other, I'll uh, put basil, marigolds, things like that around it for insect protection. And then there'll be herbs on the outside, and these lettuces, these succulent lettuces and carrots on the inside. And so what I'm doing is kind of creating a, a mini atmosphere for all the stuff that thrive based on each other. And at the same time, I'm minimizing my workload by bringing the stuff to me instead of taking me to the stuff. So I can do more in a smaller area by intensively managing it. But I, by doing that, I reduce my water usage, which the hookah culture is almost nothing. But I still, I'll lay a drip line across the top just so that the bed always has water. <coughs> but now instead of, you know, if you laid this all out um, horizontally, you've got a much larger surface area. So bringing it vertical, you can do more in the same spot, right? Uh, and then by companion planting, putting all this stuff in the same spot, now I have to re I reduce the, the amount of weeds I have to deal with and the amount of time I have to deal with plucking those weeds. So, garden smarter, not harder, right? <laughs> go beyond the, uh, you know, the old school of thought with right. rows and go to, you know, vertical wherever possible. A um, ton of work to get started. Uh, each one of these beds probably took this, I don't know, my buddy and came over with his bobcat, but it still took me eight to ten hours per per one of these beds. Right. But I mean, how much would I spend on those same beds over 30 years fertilizing? 